Welcome to the Path TV. We are Philip and Laura Baker, and as always, thanks for spending some time with us. We're going to have a good time today. Welcome to the Path. What is the Path all about? You know, if you're the, uh, if this is the first time uh, you're watching one of our programs, a great marriage. That's what we want you to have. We want you to have a great marriage. A great marriage is not a destination. Uh, it is a journey. It is a, it's a path. And uh, we want to stay on that path all the days of our life. We want you guys to one day celebrate 50 years of amazing marriage. I know we are one day. Uh, we're, at, we're at 34 and counting. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We want you to have a great marriage. Well, again, it's not a destination. It's a journey. It's a path. And uh, what this show is all about is all of us uh, getting a little bit further along that path every episode. If it is your first time watching The Path, hey, please understand you're not behind. All the episodes are available to you. All you got to do is go over to our YouTube channel, uh, search PBM Philip Space Baker, and uh, you can subscribe, hit the bell, and all the episodes. Going all the way back to our debut episode number one, they're all there waiting on you, along with a lot of other cool media. And so uh, we hope you enjoy it. Hey, I want to shout out to all the men out there. You know, I, I love it when men watch the path. You say, why? Because one of the things I believe with all my heart is great men of God, great marriages. Great marriages, great churches. Great churches, strong kingdom. And so it all begins with us men. And uh, if you're out there watching this today, man, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Also glad for all the ladies. And uh, speaking of a lady, I got a pretty one sitting here right beside me. And we're going to start uh, a, a new series today in the path. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going, we want to focus on communication because it is so incredibly important uh, in our marriages. And so, uh, baby, give them a, a idea of where we're headed. Well, you know, when we if you joined us the last two episodes, then you heard us talk about the five greatest needs of a man, five greatest needs of a woman. And communication was number one for women. But the reality is communication is so important, not just in your marriage, but in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, that is how we get to know somebody. Number one is, is through communication. Right. Talking to somebody, um, it, it's the primary way. There are a lot of ways that you can communicate without words, but we're talking about the communication with words. Mm -hmm. That's how you get to know someone. You know, right. you've got all these people now that are on on the internet, that are on, you know, dating sites, that are on, you know, what are they doing? They're talking because they really believe that that communication is what builds a relationship. So first, you know, you in communication, you've just got to know that it is so important because it's how we learn about each other, how we how we find out what you like, what you mm -hmm. don't like, you know. Mm -hmm. And number two, it's um, it's that it's how we share our needs. You know, he's he doesn't read minds. She doesn't read minds. And so it's very important that you're able to communicate the things that you need right. in the relationship, in life, you know, and being able to verbalize those things. And then number three is you're going to, if you're married, you're going to have conflict. You're going to have arguments. You're going to have disagreements. Yeah. You've got to effectively communicate, be able to communicate so that you, you right. can get have those skills. That. Yes. If you don't have those skills, then you don't have resolution. And you just keep going around that mountain, that Ooh. same mountain, you know, all the time. You look up and you're fighting about the same thing in year 15 that you were in year one. Yeah. That's why we're talking about communication. That's why it's so important. So how do you communicate? Yeah. You know, communicates, communication, a lot of it is words. That's how, that's how we communicate is through words. So I want to say something about words because in the society we live in, Man, we, we just live in such a sarcastic, yeah, uh, vulgar, negative, pessimistic. Ne yeah, all of those things. You know, it's it's very commonplace to um, that that your language is. You know, cussing is not a big deal anymore. Mm. You know, with with the generation that I mean, I'm just noticing it's it's just commonplace. But see, words are so important. Words are are very very important. Good words and bad words. Mm -hmm. And so you form your world by your words. And I want to I want to read to you, and I, and I want to make sure that I get it right. Eight, it's Proverbs eighteen twenty one, and I want to make sure that I say the, exactly the right thing. I know death and life. You know we know that we've heard it a thousand times if you've been in church. 
death and life are in the power of your tongue, which we know that. Right. It also goes on to say, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So that means that words produce fruit. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I want to know, what is the, what is the, the fruit that you're eating? Mm. What, what is it? Are your words producing good fruit or is it producing bad fruit? Yeah. You know, words are so very, very, very vital. And so I was, you know, listening the other day to someone and, and they were talking about, they'd heard a comedian. It was an older comedian. I, if you'd say his name, you, I, mm. you might know who he was. But he was talking about as he was being raised, as he was growing up, he was abused by his father. And it was, it was physical abuse, but it was also uh, emotional, you know, verbal. emotional, verbal, that kind of abuse. And he began to talk about it and how, you know, it, it, you know the pain that comes through that. But the statement that he made was all of the physical abuse was horrible and no one should be physical. You know, we're not sure. advocating that in any way, but that all healed. He said it was the emotional and the verbal abuse that stayed with him for his life. He said those words. The words never left. Mm. And I think if you talk to anybody, and we've done it many times in, in sessions talking to people, and you begin to talk to them and talk to them, you know, what are you dealing with? And it goes back to something someone said 30 years ago. 20 years ago, and yeah. it still is painful for them to talk about. It still, um, it still scarred them. It still hurt them. It still um, formed who they think they are yeah. and what kind of person they think they are. So it's so important that, that we communicate effectively and right way that we're not damaging the other person, mm -hmm. that we're not hurting the other person, and know that your words are very, 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 very powerful. Right. The Bible says life and death. And so what, what are you speaking? And what is that doing to your marriage? And what is that right. doing to your life and your relationships? Right. You know, if, if you don't have good communication skills, you could be talking about something, an issue, that maybe on the Richter scale is a three. Yeah. All right? I mean, it's really a three issue. But because you don't have good communication skills, you say something and all of a sudden you just turn the three into a seven. And now the argument isn't about the issue. The argument is about how you're speaking to one another because you don't have good communication skills. Mm -hmm. And so we want to we want to we want to discuss that over these next few episodes. And so our dynamic is a great marriage will have to overcome many obstacles to have healthy communication. You're going to have to overcome some obstacles, and we want to discuss those obstacles. Our scripture that I want to that I want to read to you, uh, just a great, great scripture. Uh, Galatians, Galatians 4, verse 5 and 6, it says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Now watch, watch verse 6 here. Let your speech, let your communication be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every... Hey, watch this. It says man, but answer every spouse. How to answer your husband. How to answer your wife. That's Colossians. You said oh, I'm sorry. Colossians yeah. 4. Colossians so 4. They're looking it up. They get it. We just communicated uh, skillfully. And so, Colossians, the fourth chapter, that we would know how to answer every husband, know how to answer every wife. And so, we want to talk about obstacles today. So, let, let's jump into this. Uh, I, I, I want to get one out of the way before we take a break. And the first, the first obstacle, these aren't in order of uh, importance. We just, we just want to look at some common obstacles uh, for healthy communication. The, number, the first one is uh, different priorities in life. Different priorities. Um, you know, things mean more to your husband than maybe mean to you. Things mean more to you than maybe to your husband or your wife. Uh, when I talk about priorities, I think, I think our... I think our priorities should be along these lines. I, I, I hope this is where priorities are in your life, but I, I, I think it's fair to say that our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus Christ, yeah. come on, our, our place as a believer in the kingdom should be first. Come on, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His, and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I think our first and foremost uh, priority in life and marriage should be our relationship with God. Jesus should come first. And then, you know, maybe our second priority would be, would be family. Our marriage, our kids, um, you know, to have a, to have a great family, a godly, mar a godly family. Um, I think that should be our second priority. Third should be, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it, church, ministry, 
what God has called you to do. Uh, you know, notice how I separated that from your relationship with God. You know, to me, they're not the same thing. Now, there, there's, there's some people out there, there's ministries out there that would disagree with me. So, you know, you're going you're gonna to have to determine, you know, what you believe along those lines. But my relationship with God, to me, is not the, the same as what God has called me to do. Uh, both of them are priorities in my life, but right in the middle is my family. We're a ministry. Uh, I have a great passion for the kingdom. I know 50 churches a year. We travel all over the world. We got the Path TV. We got the Daily Move you need to sign up for. We got books. I mean, we're passionate. We're focused. Um, but my family comes first. And you know what? My relationship with God comes before them. And so, you know, that, that's just something for you to, for you to ponder. But those, those are priorities. And then, you know, you, you get past those and, you know, you've got, you've got interests. You've got hobbies. You've got things you love to do, things you're passionate about about um work. you know work work hobbies you know and, the, and 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 all of that and so you know what if the husband's number one priority is is work and the wife's number one priority is her relationship with god what if a man's priority is is ministry uh in the and and the wife's priority you know is is family what if, what if the priorities aren't matched and we, we, we've got things that you, that is going to be an obstacle it is. to healthy communication because priorities are different. You're wanting different things. You're, you're wanting focusing, different things. You're focusing on different things and you're not, you're not in unity. And when you're not in unity... Not in agreement. Yeah, not in agreement. When you're not in agreement with what you're focusing on and it may not be to the same intensity you know, his work or his hobbies, you know, may be a little, the intensity may be more on that than it is on mine, but, or, or, or vice versa. Vice versa. But, right. You know, you've got to be in agreement that you're going after the same thing. It is really about unity. Absolutely. So, hey, single people, hey, you're, you're walking by in the living room. Stop. Single people, listen. That's why you need to uh, have these conversations with somebody before you get married. You better, you better find out what their priorities are. You better find out there's some agreement with priorities uh, or there's going to be a huge obstacle to some good communication yeah, moving lot, forward. A lot of examples of that. You know, you get a, you get a couple and that's why when he said pre-marriage, you know, you've got to find out, is his priority your family? And listen, if, you're, if you are a, if your family is priority and he says, you know, I'm going to let you, my mom, she raised the kids. My dad didn't have It's not a priority for me. It's not a priority. That's your job. You do uh-oh. Well, do you go, are you going to want that? You know, you better find out. You better find out. Same thing about relationship with God, uh, yeah. church, all of that stuff. Very important. So different priorities. So, hey, let's take a break. What I need you to do after this episode is over is I need you to go to our website, philipbaker.org, yep. and you need to sign up for The Daily Move. It is free, 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 and it takes about 10 seconds to sign up. It's just your name and your email, and it'll take you about 15 seconds every morning to read. It's going to challenge you encourage you, inspire you. It's about three or four sentences. It's not about the quantity of words. It's about the quality of words. And it's really going to be a blessing to your life. So check this out and we'll be back in about 35 seconds. Welcome back to the Path TV again. We're Philip and Laura Baker. And, uh, oh, listen, head over to the website. Get a hold of the Daily Move. Hey, while you're there, got a lot of media there. Check out our itinerary. Maybe we're coming to a uh, church near you. And uh, check us out. We would uh, also love to hear from you. So you can, you can reach out to us and uh, email us at info at philipbaker.org. And we, we would love to hear for, from you. What's going on in your life? Where are you from? What country are you listening to us? And uh, that would be really cool. All right, we're talking about obstacles to healthy communication. And the first one was, 
different priorities. Husband and wives, different priorities. There needs to be agreement. The second one is, boy, a nasty word. Uh, boy, it's the reason the earth is in the trouble it's in. It's that word pride, pride. Listen, that was the sin that brought Lucifer down. He, he, he got consumed with pride. I, uh, you know, uh, I will be God. I will ascend into heaven. I, I, I. Pride's favorite uh, letter in the alphabet is I. Uh, I is, is, is the letter that holds pride. P-R-I-D-E. I. -I, -E. I. Uh, you get around somebody full of pride and... Uh, you, I've done this. I've known people. You, want, you find yourself counting how many times they say I. Well, I, well, I, I, I did this and I did that. Yeah. And I, 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 they, they love them some I. And their favorite phrase is, I know, I know, I know, uh, uh, I know. You try to tell them something and uh, I know, I know, I know. You can't tell them nothing because they already know. And I know you're out there laughing. You're going, OMG, I know somebody just like that. And if you're married to them, that's a blockage to healthy communication. Because here's the thing. If you're married to somebody like that, you don't want to have conversations with them. No. Because it's not going to end well. Because they, whatever you're going to tell them, they already know. And all you're going to get from them is I, 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 I. And you say, what does that represent? Well, it's, uh, they use it as defensiveness. Yeah. It, it's their walls. If they talk about I, 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 and I, I, I know, I know, I know, that's defensiveness. They got their walls up. And so they're, they're using that to protect themselves from any kind of uh, judgment or wisdom or help or correction or inspiration or information, right? Because they already know. And then it's just, it's just uh, somebody give me an amen now. It's just stubbornness. Stubbornness, arrogance. Now, yeah. if you are that person, Woo. that's going to be rare because usually the person who is this cannot recognize it in themselves. No, they can't. They they, can't. They're, 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 you're sitting out there and you're listen to them, listening to them and you're going, uh, uh, that's not... I know, I know exactly what you're saying, yeah. Brother Philip, and that's not me. They're usually the person that's saying, oh... I know that he's talking about this person, this person, this person. You better look in the mirror. Right, and your wife is sitting there beside you, or your husband is sitting there beside you, and they're going. But they don't dare say it. <laughs> they don't dare say it. They don't dare say it because you're, you're going to get prideful, and you're going to get defensive, and you're going to get stubborn, and you're going to start throwing I. And I, That's a blockage to communication. It's a blockage to communication. And I, I want to remind you, the reason Lucifer fell was he was full of pride. Pride comes before the fall. So man, uh, that's something we really need to look at. You ab absolutely. And you know, you the whole goal of marriage is to be teachable. You're not perfect. He's not perfect. She's not perfect. Your, your spouse is not perfect. You know that. Going into it, you know that's who we are. Right. And so, you know, you've got to ask yourself, am I teachable? Every time that my wife or my husband has wants to have a conversation with me, I back up and I sit there and I say, "Oh yeah, I know that." Hmm. Are you are you thinking that? I know hmm. that. I know that. What you what you effectively what you have effectively done is shut them down, which is what mm -hmm. you want to do. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to get you any resolution. Yeah, it's like the old story. Somebody might be out there and they go, "Well, brother, Phil, that's not me. I am really humble. Yeah. Uh, I am." <laughs> I am just really humble. Yeah. And I always think about the joke, you know, there's this person in the church and they received an award for most humble. And so they gave him a badge, you know, that said a most, a, a button, yeah. you know, most humble award. And so the next Sunday, they, they wore the button to church and the pastor walked up to him and said, let me have the button. He, Why? Because the most humble person doesn't wear the button the next week. So humility. let me have it back. Yeah, humility, and so, do yeah, humility doesn't do yeah. that. So, you know, a lot of times... Uh, you know, a lot of times, hey, listen, we all got a little pride in us. Some got a little bit more than others, but we all got some. And we could all be more humble. And when you can get pride out of the way and you can bring some humility into your marriage, your communication is going to be a lot better. So number one, different priorities. Number two, P-R-I-D-E, pride. And number three, hit them with it.
listen. Personality differences. What? There's personality differences? Absolutely. My personality is different than yours. <laughs> Usually you end up marrying the opposite of your personality most of the time. Now, you know, when I was, when we were at the Bible school and we were teaching, I taught on a class called Personality Plus. And I would begin to teach and I would start, I would spend like half of the first class talking to them about really, really, don't become a Pharisee. You're going to learn all this information. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you're going to want to do is turn it on everybody in your, in your life. Yeah. Oh, well, you're this. Oh, well, you're that. Label, 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 label. And, you know, right now the big thing is Enneagrams. Mm -hmm. uh, what Enneagram are you? Yeah. I'm a two, I'm a wing three. I am a one, I am a wing two. I am, you know, you, what is your, oh, she's such an eight. Yeah. Oh, you must be Enneagram nine. Yeah. You know, and what we would like to do is we like to put people in a box, but then we look at our Enneagram or our personality or our temperament and we, we use it as a crutch. We go, well, mm -hmm. The reason that I do this is because I am sanguine. I am melancholy. Mm -hmm. I'm choleric. I am. We use Phlegmatic. it as a crutch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I'm an Enneagram too. I'm an. I, it's an excuse you know. for all of our weaknesses. Absolutely. And you can't do that because mm -hmm. listen, we all we all have a reason that we could be the way that we are. That's what you're trying to do. Is you're trying to get out to take your weaknesses and turn them into strengths. If you coddle them like a puppy like you would a baby, mm -hmm. if you, if you, if you baby it, oh, this is why I am the way I am. You're not taking responsibility for not only who you are, but how you respond, how you act and how you treat other people. Right. And you want everybody, the, the funny thing is that you want everyone to make exception for your personality, for your flaws, for your weaknesses, for the reason that you do that is your personality type, your mm -hmm. Enneagram, your temperament. But then when it comes to someone else, you judge them for that. Mm. And so you're, that is going to, that is going to cause a problem with communication. Listen, I don't care if you're sanguine and you're bubbly and you, you just all the time, you've got to find out what area of that is, is causing a weakness in my communication. What, what is it hindering me from doing? Mm. And you got to love the person enough to say, I've got to make some changes. Right. You know, I can't let this be my excuse for treating you this way or for not doing this or for doing doing something I'm not supposed mm -hmm. to do. And so don't use that as an, an excuse. Right. Don't do not do that. The whole purpose of that teaching is to teach you about yourself, to, te you, to teach you about your strengths, about your weaknesses, so that you can accentuate your strengths and you can get better at that. But you can take your weaknesses and you can make changes. Minimize them. Minimize yeah, them. through the Word of God, there you through go. your relationship with Christ, renewing your mind. And so I think what we're talking about yeah. here is you got husbands and wives, and there's issues in the marriage, there's issues in the commu in communication, and somebody always wants to fall. But well, listen, that's just my personality. Well, here's the thing: uh, I don't give a rip what your personality is. Uh, th that's not the issue. The marriage is more important than your personality. And through the Word of God, and through renewing our mind. Once again, we can, hey, somebody told me a long time ago, if you don't like your personality, change it. Right. Through the Word of God, you can change your personality. Yes. You, can, uh, you can, like what she said, she said it beautifully, accentuate your strengths, minimize your weaknesses, and if both people work on that, uh, you're going to have great communication and you're going to have a better marriage. I'll bring it over into uh, the kingdom. You know, I'll be, I'll be preaching sometimes and I'm talking about being who God's called you to be and doing what God's called you to do and... The Word of God says, Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel and let's be salt and let's be light and, uh, you know, let's tell people about Jesus, let's share our testimony, you know, and on and on and on. And, and I know somebody's out there going, out there saying, well, that's not my personality. That's just not who I am. Like you're going to stand before God one day and you're going to say, well, I didn't do what you called me to do, Father, because of my personality. I mean, do you think that's going to fly? Do you think you're going to be able to, do you think that's going to go down good for you? No, no listen, uh, your personality doesn't rule you. You rule your personality. And so I want to shift over into this thought. We're talking about different priorities, talking about pride, talking about personality differences. Take this episode and don't try to figure out your spouse. Right. Point all that towards yourself. You know... There's not a lot of people these days that have the ability to step outside themselves mm -hmm. and objectively look at their life. It's rare. 
Uh, people can't do it, won't do it, ain't going to do it, you know, hell will freeze over before I do it. They're, they're not going to do it. And you better not try to, you know, do it for me. Uh, very few people have the ability, I'm going to say it again, to step outside themselves and really look at their life objectively. And when you can do that, man, you're, 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 you're on your way uh, to, to a real special place. You're on your way to some healthy communication. You're on your way to a great marriage because you look at yourself and you go, okay, I'm doing good here, but I need to work on this. And that just makes you uh, draw closer to God. Yeah. It makes you draw closer to Jesus. It makes you cl draw closer to the Word. And it, it'll, it'll, it'll cause you to, to gather, to, to draw closer to some materials like the PATH TV yeah. that, can, that can help you. And also, as, as you build that trust in each other, Right. And you build, and you know that if I if I can, I know that if I come to him and say, look, you know, what is it that I mean, what is it you're seeing? Well, I trust him enough that he's not going to just blurt out something horrible, but he's going to help me. He, you know, we're we're here to help each other. Amen. And but that that comes with trust. Amen. And effective communication. That's yeah. a good. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're going to keep going uh, in in this direction. So our next episode, we're going to talk about some more. Uh, obstacles of communication. Yeah. So, so hang with us. But we hope you enjoyed this today. I hope this episode, again, get over to our website and uh, sign up for the Daily Move. Both of our books are there, The Move and The Bill. Check out our itinerary. And hey, listen, pray sincerely. Pray about partnering with Philip Baker Ministries and helping us take the PATH TV all over the world, over 50 churches a year, nations. We're going to Bulgaria here soon. And uh, when you're a partner with the ministry, everywhere we go, you yeah. go. Yeah. You'll be a part of everything we're doing to build the kingdom. And uh, man, we love our partners. We appreciate our partners, the people, the businesses, the churches that uh, monthly partner with us. Just go over to our website, hit donate, and it's so easy. You can uh, sow a one-time gift yeah. or you can, uh, like a lot of people, you can partner monthly with us with us and so we just really appreciate you we can't wait to see you again and uh, we're going to continue talking about these obstacles to healthy communication and we're going to get a little further along the path god bless